Hello, this is Roland. Just wanted to stop by to tell you about my new series of videos on the Sermon on the Mount. They're very wonderful. Each one is anywhere from 10 to 25 minutes long. I have like 16 or 17 of them now. You can go to my YouTube channel and click on the playlist, Sermon on the Mount. What's really exciting about them is that I'm reading them from the Kaboris Manuscript, an English translation, a beautiful English translation of the Kaboris Manuscript, which was written in Aramaic, the language that Jesus spoke. It's just exquisitely beautiful, painstakingly translated. And I think you'll enjoy it because the wording and the phrasing and the words are a little different than what you're used to. Very close, but a little different. I think you'll find it um, uh, stimulating and perhaps um, uh, enlightening. In fact, I'm sure you'll find it enlightening if you receive it with a, with a good spirit. So that's the main thing I want to tell you. Um, very nice. The Sermon on the Mount, read from the Kaboris Manuscript, with, of course, my commentary. And my commentary is designed to put in modern language, okay? Some of the principles that that are that are brought forth that that will come forth from the beautiful um, Sermon on the Mount. Okay, so I hope you'll take time to uh, stop by and watch it. You should watch it all of the episodes, and you should also get my meditation. The problem people have today is they're lost in thought. They're lost in a fog. Um, texting. Um, and uh, imagination. Video games. Um, not to mention thinking about the past, worrying about the future. People are lost in thought. But, you know, it's not in thought where you're going to find God. You can't study your way to God. And... And frankly, you can't think your way to him either. You need to see. So you need to see in the light of truth. You need to see the way things are. In the light of truth, which is wordless. You just see. Remember when you were a little kid and you just saw things? Maybe you couldn't put words on them because you were a little kid, but you saw things. For example, if you saw injustice when you were four years old. If, if there was an injustice, one child was being treated nicer than another, you saw the injustice. One child got more than another for no reason. Or, see, injustice. You saw it. Nobody had to teach you. Well, now, as a big person, if you get back in touch with, with your intuition, which is from God, God gives animals instincts, instinct. He gives humans intuition. So you can realize principles. Okay? Realize truth. You see, you in the light, you just see it. Okay, I remember one time I was I was reading where Christ said, "All who sin are slaves," or "All who sin are slaves of sin," depending on how you translate it. But basically, all who sin are slaves. And I saw that principle. I saw it. And then for the next, I think it was half a year, almost just about every day, I would go out in the world. And do things and talk to people and read things and watch things. And over and over again, I would see that principle. I would see in the world somebody enslaved to something. I'd say, oh, all who sin are slaves. See, I saw it over and over again. Each time another facet, each time deeper. It's called realization. It's called the aha moment. The eureka moment. That's what you need. And then from that can come thinking. See, it's not that there's anything wrong with thinking, but the thinking should should come should come, flow from the intuition, from the realization, which is from God, which is your intuition. Okay. And that's the way I operate. When I sit down to make a um, video, or to write, or to make my radio program, I don't plan what I'm going to to say. It's what comes to me. I see something. And then I say it. I elaborate on it. Okay? That's the way you have to learn to be. 
You have to learn to live in God's light. That's the way the ancient people did. You know, the patriarchs, Moses, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Elijah, Noah. They lived in God's light. Okay? They were close to God. They lived in light. They didn't live down in their imagination like people do today. Okay? That's the way you have to be. You have to live in the light and then see in the light. Even Augustine understood that. I was reading a passage yesterday. Actually, I was reading from my book. I wrote a book called A Weekend with Einstein and Augustine. What an excellent book it is. Science, cosmology, philosophy, physics. It's a beautiful book. Just beautiful. A Weekend with Einstein and Augustine. I talked about how Einstein used his intuition and how Augustine did. But Augustine said, I think it was, I think it may have been in his confessions, but somewhere he said, you know, when I read the the, uh, Genesis written by Moses, I said, how do I know that it's true? He said, even if Moses were here speaking to me and I could understand, let's say Moses talked in Latin and I could understand what he was saying, Augustine said, if I was listening to Moses say something, I was still, how would I know that what he's saying is true? It's because I would see with it, I would see it in the inner light from God. See, that's the only way you can, that's the only way you can know for sure whether something is true or not, when you see that it's true in God's light. Okay? Now you all have that. See, but you've lost touch with it because you've gotten lost in worrying and thinking and feeling and emotions. So, best thing for you would be to try the meditation and see if you can get back in touch with it again and refine your intuition.